Good morning, and thank you for joining us. My name is Dr. Libby Saunier, and I'm the Executive Director of the Louisiana Policy Institute for Children. As an independent source of data, research, and pertinent information for policymakers, the Louisiana Policy Institute for Children works to shed light on the state of early care and education in Louisiana. Alongside our partners, the Policy Institute has been conducting a series of surveys on the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on childcare in Louisiana. Last spring and summer, we released findings on how the pandemic has impacted childcare providers and emphasized the need for investments in early care and education to help get Louisiana back to work and fully reopen our economy. This fall, we wanted to learn more about how families with children under the age of five have been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, particularly in regard to childcare needs. During the first six months of the COVID-19 pandemic, we witnessed families facing shifting education and care options for their children as K-12 schools largely remained closed until the fall and many childcare providers closed or had reduced enrollment capacity due to public health requirements. At the same time, record numbers of Louisianians filed for unemployment. The Policy Institute conducted a statewide survey of parents and guardians of children under age five from September 21st to October 6, 2020. Questions ranged from asking about childcare arrangements before and since the pandemic's onset, personal care, child care expenses, comfort level in sending children to child care in light of the public health crisis, and, and family work schedules and more. The findings and conclusions we are going to share with you today speak to the needs and challenges of families with young children in Louisiana, many of whom are struggling as the COVID-19 pandemic endures. Before I introduce our moderator for today's press conference, I want to take a moment to thank our partners without whom our work would not be possible. Agenda for Children, the Louisiana Department of Education, the New Orleans Campaign for Grade Level Reading, the Urban League of Louisiana and Women United of Southeast Louisiana. At this time, it's my great honor to introduce our moderator, Linnell Young. Linnell is a nationally certified school psychologist and licensed professional counselor with the Louisiana Parent Education Network, a professional association for parenting educators in Louisiana comprised of professionals from various backgrounds and training who share a common interest in providing high quality parenting education. Thank you for joining us today, Linnell. Thank you for the introduction, Libby. And thank you to the entire Louisiana Policy Institute team for your consistent and thorough research throughout this pandemic. It is my honor to serve as the moderator for today's virtual press conference to share the findings of the Policy Institute's most recent report, Struggling to Recover, the Impacts of COVID-19 on Louisiana Families with Young Children. Given the subject matter which we will be covering, the Policy Institute was purposeful in selecting the speakers from whom you're here today. All four are mothers of young children and can speak firsthand to the challenges their families faced amid the ongoing pandemic. Throughout today's program, we invite you to type questions into the chat box. And at the end of the program, we will have a question and answer session when we will attempt to address the inquiries. So it's my pleasure to now welcome our first speaker, Morgan LaMondre. Morgan is an attorney for sexual assault survivors and a mother of two young boys. Welcome, Morgan. Thank you. And thank you for the introduction, Linnell, and to everyone who contributed to this report and its critical findings. Um, every working individual across Louisiana has felt the emotional, physical, and financial effects of COVID-19. But most of all, parents. Um, parenting is already a second job, but trying to work, take care of a toddler, and assist my school-age child with virtual learning was nearly impossible. 
I know I felt overwhelmed on a daily basis and I've always appreciated childcare workers, but I never realized how much they powered the economy until many shut down last year. The Policy Institute's most recent report details how even in the, an economy affected by COVID-19, families with young children continue to need child care to support parent employment or education, and parents must adjust schedules to fill child care gaps. Most of parents responding to this survey indicated that they were working or in school full time and outside the home and three quarters of the families reported that they relied on some type of formal childcare outside the home. These parents on average reported that their children were in childcare for 39 hours per week. And amid the pandemic, almost two thirds of parents responding to the survey reported having experienced some sort of adjustment to their work or school schedule in order to be able to provide childcare during the pandemic. Our state's economic recovery relies on working families and clearly these working families rely on childcare. Thank you, Morgan. Next, I am pleased to introduce Melissa Goodo. Melissa is the board president of the Early Childhood Development and Family Center of Avoyles and the mother of two children. Melissa? Thank you for the introduction, Linnell, and thank you to Libby and the Policy Institute for inviting me to the event today. As a working mother of two children um, and the board president of an early learning center, type three center, I've experienced the effects of COVID from both angles, from running a center and just dealing with it as a mom. It's a struggle to balance home and work life and provide a sense of normalcy that I think we all just crave for our kids. My children are five and three years old, you know, so protecting them and just giving them that sense of normalcy is important uh, while also finding a way to continue life. And then you know, also keeping the early learning center up and running for all of those critical and essential workers um, that are within our parish during a pandemic. So it's been a struggle and a balance for the past year, uh, but we're making it through. Uh, the Policy Institute's most recent report shows that families are really struggling to afford childcare and the basic necessities uh, while childcare costs in Louisiana average about $10,000 per year. Um, families in Louisiana reported paying almost $400 per month for childcare for a family with two children, and that's about 9,500 a year. It's important to note, I just wanna mention this from a, an early learning center um, vantage point that most of those teachers are still only making a little bit more than minimum wage. So while that seems like a lot, centers are really running on a very, very tight budget to pay their teachers and keep stability for those kids. Nearly one third of families responding to the survey receive some type of subsidized, subsidized child care, either through the child care assistance program, which is also known to parents as CCAP, or another free child care program within the state. However, many of these families are still responsible for making up the difference between that CCAP subsidy and what the providers charge in tuition. There's still a pretty uh, substantial gap there. Not surprisingly, almost half of those parents report being concerned about their ability to afford, afford child care uh, due to high costs, and they're worried about being able to afford families' basic needs. Moving forward, we must take the necessary investments in our early care and education to ensure that eligible families continue to be able to access child care assistance and that child care consistent assistance covers more true cost for care for parents and the providers. Thank you, Melissa, for sharing that information. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Celeste Carter, who's with us today. And Celeste is the mother of two young children and a member of the LSU Early Head Start Policy Council. Celeste. Thank you, Linnell, and good morning, everyone. Yes, as Linnell said, I have two young children at home. And 
pandemic, we've been forced to isolate from family and friends. It's been extremely difficult to be at home with two babies. Having quality childcare to send my children to is invaluable to me. If it were not for their childcare center, I would not be able to work and my children would not have any social interactions, which are so important for their development. The impact on working families and single parents is significant. Not having the ability to go to work or having hours drastically reduced, parents are just having a hard time meeting financial responsibilities all around. It's crucial to remember that even before the COVID-19 pandemic, many working Louisiana parents struggled to afford quality care for their children. The economic downturn from the pandemic further compounded this issue. The Policy Institute's most recent report reflected that even in the face of reduced income, increased stress and concern about the spread of COVID-19, Louisiana working families continue to rely on childcare. While the majority of parents in Louisiana reported the COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted their lives and increased their stress level as a parent, and almost half reported seeing their family's monthly income decrease during the pandemic. One thing remains clear, they still need reliable quality childcare for their children. Additionally, nearly one fifth of parents reported their work or school hours have decreased compared to February 2020. One third of parents reported being concerned about their employment. Moving forward, additional investments will be necessary to ensure there is a childcare sector for working parents and their employees that to rely on in the future. This is a critical need for Louisiana's businesses and economy to bounce back. Thank you. Thank you so much, Celeste. And now, uh, last but definitely not least, I'm pleased to have Louisiana State Representative Stephanie Hilferty to speak with us today. Thank you for joining us, Representative Hilferty. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Linnell, and thank you, Libby, for putting this together. Um, I'm the State Representative for Louisiana District 94, which uh, runs along the lakefront of Orleans and Jefferson Parishes. Um, and I'm also the mother of two children, a four-year-old daughter and a two-year-old son. So um, first of all, I'm impressed that um, all of the mothers, we haven't had any children um, come in on the Zoom um, <laughs> because that is a frequent um, occurrence on my Zoom calls, <laughs> uh, especially my two-year-old son. Um, so it's, it's really great to see you all um, and, and really to see the um, participation in this call today. I know we have several people on the, the line and on the Zoom call. As Linnell said, I'm here to discuss the final critical finding in the Policy Institute's most recent survey of Louisiana parents and guardians of children under age five. The Policy Institute's most recent report found that economic challenges resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic hit families of color and lower income families especially hard. In fact, unemployment rates were nearly twice as high for black parents and nearly three times as high for parents with a family income below $20,000 per year. Additionally, parents of color and families with incomes below 50,000 per year were more likely to have seen their monthly income decrease or have an adult in their house experience job loss as a result of COVID-19. And subsequently, they expressed concern about being able to afford their family's basic needs. All Louisiana working families need increased access to high quality affordable childcare now more than ever. Thank you, Representative Hilferty. And thank you to all of our speakers for sharing these findings. I uh, now would like to once again welcome Dr. Libby Saunier, Executive Director of the Policy Institute for some final remarks. Thank you so much, Linnell, and thank you to all our presenters today from around the state in this critically important conversation that we're having. As the COVID-19 pandemic endures and Louisiana continues to see an alarming COVID-19 positivity rate, we must resolve to work together towards increased funding for child care assistance at the state and local levels to support both families struggling to afford child care for their young children and rebounding businesses who need to access need access to a reliable for workforce. As a reminder, prior to COVID-19, two thirds of children aged five and under in Louisiana had both parents or a single parent in the workforce. For those parents to return to work, they must have access to quality, reliable early care and education for their young children. There are many unknowns still ahead, but one thing we do know for sure, 
we must work to support the childcare sector through public investments to increase the availability of quality, reliable childcare for working parents. This means directing any additional COVID-19 federal investments towards supporting childcare providers with keeping their doors open and rates affordable as they balance increased health and safety requirements, higher operational cost and lower enrollment capacities. Without this increased investment in the early care and education sector and facilitating access to quality, reliable early care and education, parents and caregivers working across every industry will not be able to return to work to provide for their families and keep the Louisiana economy moving forward. This is why it is critical, critically important that we maintain expanded eligibility for essential workers to childcare assistance enabling parents in our most critical fields to afford quality childcare while they work on the front lines. The Louisiana Policy Institute for Children plans to hold another virtual press conference to present additional findings on the ongoing adverse impacts of COVID-19 on the childcare providers in Louisiana in the coming months. Please stay tuned for details. At this time, we are going to proceed with questions and answers and a question and answer portion of the event. Please type your questions into the chat box and we will, um, we will try to address them. Thank you all. A question from Melissa Harding. Is there any upcoming legislation to address this issue? Uh, the plan right now, we uh, many of us work in a coalition called the Ready Louisiana Coalition that are really working uh, to, in, to increase investment at the state level uh, on child care. So things that are happening currently right now, as many of us know, is that Louisiana passed in 55 out of the 64 parishes in our state um, the opportunity for sports betting. And so that will be something that will come up in this legislative session to see if any of the revenues from sports betting um, can go towards early care and education and then the early childhood fund that the state has. Uh, next question is understanding the loss of financial resources and revenues to the state. Is there any consideration to raise the per pupil cost that is paid to, to the schools? Um, if you're talking about child care, uh, the board of the board of elementary and secondary education just increased eligibility for children and increased the rates in which child care providers are being paid um, per child. And do we have any stats on the impacts of the regions in the state? We do have um, broken down by region in our report that you can get an electronic electronic copy of related to the region that you live in in the state. Well, I can't thank our panelists and our moderators enough um, for everything that they have done. Um, the question that was just asked was regarding pre pre-K four students through um, the, the, um, the governor's program for for pre-K four, I think there's always a continuation to have a conversation about uh, per pupil cost. I know that that's always a, a question that our state superintendent brings up and that we all talk about. But as of right now, I, I can't say that I've heard of anything. But I I would be remiss to to pretend that I have. So I just I don't want to put anything out there. Um, and then another question came: Given that we reported that many parents are working less. Why childcare now and how many are working full time? Um, and so in our report, we had over 50% of families were continuing to work full time during the pandemic and they still needed childcare. And so the answer is, you know, why childcare now? Um, if our economy is gonna rebound, if we're gonna be able to come out of COVID and get people back to work, they need to have reliable, affordable childcare. Uh, and so the, the results of this study really showed us that Childcare was needed prior to COVID, but now in this new world that we're living in, in the middle of COVID and hoping to recover from COVID, childcare is going to continue to be needed. Um, and we're particularly going to make need to make sure that it's quality. Because we know that anytime we see an economic downturn, 
Young children tend to lag in their development. We know that from the Great Recession. We know that from the Great Depression. And we also know it from, from um, Katrina. So that when we see that economic downturn, children's development does lag. And so the, the impact of early care and education on young children and what quality can do can really change the trajectory to make sure children are ready to learn when they enter into kindergarten. And I think Libby, to the point of the CCAP program where we're looking at parents that are in training in school or in a job. Um, so if, if I am at home with the children and a child or children, and I'm trying to, um, you know, make more income for my family or something, and I, I pursue that job training, that's where I think, um, you know, a program like CCAP fits, fits really well um, because it does allow for that job training, working or in school. Absolutely. Great. Point. Um, that the reality of the situation is how a lot of families went into COVID is not how they're coming out. Um, we went into COVID as a two parent household. I lost my children's father. I'm now a single mother. Um, another parent on our panel lost her husband as well. And so how we went into COVID, um, my mother working part time, she's now full time. Um, here I am retraining, getting back into things. It's completely changed for parents. And if I might add, thank you for sharing that, Celeste, that's, that's, that's very noteworthy. So the other percentage of parents who are not uh, needing childcare outside of the home are providing childcare inside the home. So I think it's important not to forget the need for parental supports uh, to families where they are having to try to meet the needs of the children in more challenging situations. I, so, I will. I'm sorry, Linnell. Thank you. Yes, go on. I, I do want to mention um, a website that the Department of Ed, in conjunction with the Department of Health, is working on, which is a parental resource website that is geared towards parents, um, and especially parents in that zero to four range. Um, and I've joked with them that it needs to be accessible to a parent that is watching a two-year-old running around, nursing a baby, and you know, cooking dinner. Like, I mean, that's got to be the level of ease and accessibility for this website, um, but it will, it will meet parents at that nexus of, um, you know, when do pediatrician visits occur, when, you know, what is developmentally, what should, you know, what should potentially my child be doing at six months, and, and then what are some, some games I can play with, with my six-month-old. Um, so this is going to be a resource not only for those parents who are working, but also those parents who, you um, whether by choice or by necessity are watching their children within the home, they can also use this resource. So it, it's an exciting development. Um, it's, it's in its early stages, but we look forward to reporting more information on that. Absolutely. Well, with no further questions, I think we'll wrap this up, but I can't um, thank our panelists and our moderator enough for helping us share the story of Louisiana parents and how they're facing COVID and they're in, in each of your needs for childcare as you have young children and move forward. Um, you can see that you can find an electronic copy on our website at the policyinstitutela.org. Um, and we look forward to feedback and thank you all again.